I've actually been in like the wedding space for majority of my life. So I used oh. to do bridal makeup. Oh wow. Right? So you can imagine I'm spending like a one weekend, maybe three or four brides, right? So wow. I'm listening to their stories. Yeah. I'm listening to how they met their husband to be, how they got proposed to. And again, like I heard it all. Inshallah, by now you've given this a thumbs up and you're ready to subscribe because this nikah doesn't have to end here. Plus, there's always more ways to chill, like grabbing our exclusive nikah and chill merchandise. Check out our halal phone card holders and our new nikah and chill couples journal. Jazakallah khair fam. Literally, it seems like a Muslim dating app is the only way to meet people. So it was such a great idea. I know, unfortunately, Unless you're, you know, confident. I think me and you are the type of confident people where if we're at a coffee shop and we see a guy that might be our type, we might actually walk over. I'm, ne I'm never shy to give my business card out. My business card has my little headshot. But, um, yeah, like, what is, what's even another way to connect I'm with people? I'm actually way too chicken shit for stuff like that. No way! Like, I could never. No, I'm like... If you yeah. feel cute and confident, does it make you a little better? <sighs> does it make me like uh, want like to... be able to talk a little bit more if they do approach you? So like, okay, here's it depends on like what we're talking about. Like, I can be so confident when it comes to the topics that I need to talk about. Like, if I'm talking about work and like, yes. I want to talk about cryptocurrencies <laughs> or if I want to talk about like like nerd things, yeah, I have like the full blown confidence to yes. communicate with someone. But I immediately like, I think I become like genderless. <laughs> because I'll be like, yeah. I'll be like, yeah, bro, like, I love this, this is awesome. And then like, I like, it's no longer about like, oh, I think you're cute. And but that's the thing, like, I have to, I have to do that for me to feel comfortable. And yeah, um, I mean, I think the reason why I give out my business cards is because unfortunately that is my comfort zone business talk because yeah. because then you avoid rejection it's like oh he just didn't want to work with me like and yeah. instead of like really we wasn't I wasn't trying to work with him like I was just trying to like give him my number and see if he'll you know text me slide in the dms but yeah yeah it's not easy to maneuver are we are we are we taken now are we what are you taken yeah yeah so I mean it's the same person that you seen about. on tiktok yeah right yes. is he on your tiktok yeah he, he is yeah he's he's on a lot of my social media stuff but yeah we're, we're still together but it's like it's very much like non-traditional um, yeah um way of going about things because okay. i think that like in our culture we have like a huge emphasis on if you like me you marry me right and uh you're I, taking like, your time yeah i kind of am in a new Place in my life where I don't think like that anymore because I think marriage is a very beautiful and sacred thing and I don't think it's something that should ever be rushed because you have to fully want to be with that person forever and I, I don't think that you can make that decision um in in a day or two days or two right days. absolutely do you unless, think go ahead unless it is an arranged marriage then I'm like okay that to me I think those are like the most ideal situations uh-huh because and and also, like, I've done research and read on successful marriages, and a lot of them are arranged. I actually put up a poll yesterday um, because somebody tweeted, um, arranged marriages is a scam. It says arranged marriages is a scam because you could be a 10 out of 10 set up with a 4 out of 10 type of person. When it's an arranged marriage, what do you understand the process to be? When people are doing arranged marriages, they're more 
it's a little bit more of like a business deal, it seems. Because yeah. you go through like, okay, um, you know, is this person educated as the same level as me? Or do I not want a partner who's as educated? Do I want someone to kind of like stay at home? Um, and also like when they do have like those few moments of like communication, they probably talk about like, hey, how do you handle conflict? And to be honest, like a lot of times that's, they probably don't have the time to do that. But even so, like the, the thing that I read about arranged marriages is that they're successful because all these little lists and things kind of get thrown out the window. Yeah, the yeah. The common goal is that they both have the agreement that they want to commit. You couldn't see yourself doing an arranged marriage, though. Or you could. <sighs> you know, I think as I'm getting older, I'm, I, it's, to me, I'm like, I wouldn't, I can't, I can't knock it because I haven't tried it. And I feel like I come to a place right now, like after doing all my reading and like, I guess self-awareness, I, I will never be married to one idea to the point where that's my belief system. Like, right. does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I'm never going to sit here and be like, oh, I, I would never do it. And I yeah. love that you um, are taking your time, you know, you're having sabr, you're having patience with your own relationship now, um, despite maybe the pressures of the culture, the umma, people around you that are saying, you know what, it's time's, time's clicking. Do you have like a set time where it's like, I'll, I'll give it this long. And if it doesn't work out, I'm, I, I would move on. Yeah, I, I think I have like a certain time frame in my mind. But again, like, even then, I'm kind of like, is that fair? Like, I think like what's most important is removing the timeline and putting an emphasis on building a healthy relationship. Because again, like for me, what I know now is that like, I grew up in a very unhealthy, toxic environment. Mm. So I have to spend time unlearning those things that I learned yeah. from my parents, right? Also from our culture. And there's always like these like severe, severe gender roles, like the woman must have no male friends and sit at home and cook and clean. And uh, the man must be the sole provider of finances. And like, in my world, that is not the case. Like, yeah, I'm very much independent. Even though I do love to cook, I don't want to have to cook. And I've always had the my my best relationships to me have been the guys who are amazing cooks, you know, mm -hmm. um, the last one was a vegetarian. So I got like a whole new cuisine. And it was so fun. You know, it was so it's so great to learn about somebody else's strengths, and then yeah. find appreciation for their values. Yeah, like I can understand why someone would have like a really harsh checklist of like, six foot two blue eyes, like, curly hair like I can understand why someone would want those things right? <laughs> like yeah. I understand it but do I think that it's something that I have to like adapt no like yeah but I think whatever works for each individual is best for them you you gave us the tea on how to grab somebody at the wedding honey <laughs> Cause at the wedding there's some cute guys and it's like how are we supposed to do this you dance with the mama yes you swoo the mama <laughs> you bring her some cake you bring her some tea yeah. and you and you dance a little bit she's like let me introduce you to my son have you done that before um no <laughs> i haven't so like the way that i kind of look at my content is like ghost writing so okay. it's like a lot of stuff a lot of stuff that actually hasn't happened in my life, but like I'm just sitting there kind of like brainstorming or there have yes. been very similar situations. So has there been a similar situation maybe at a masjid? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. How did you and your guy, how did that happen? Uh, we met on a dating app. Okay, okay. Yeah, so but we, we were like friends for like eight months and then we decided wow. we're like, yo, like, uh, you want to meet up somewhere and yeah. we met up in Aruba and then when we met up in Aruba we had like separate places of sleep and wow. everything and we were just like homies but then like I think as as the trip like went on it was just like inevitable do you get what I'm saying like in order for me to be attracted to an individual like I actually need like a soul connection or even just like a friendship um yeah I can't like so that's why dating apps were just not for me. Picking people based on this like short ass edited um like yes. bio about yes. themselves. I think I'm a little different. I think I work up here. Yeah. And like over here versus here. <laughs> there is a fear of 
am I making the right decision? I don't want to have my heart broken. Let's just take our time, which obviously can bring in a lot of like heartbreak even, you know, because you're playing with fire, essentially. You're putting your heart on the line to someone that you may not last with. Do you think that either one of you might have also a, a, a little underlining fear or trauma 100%. of marriage? Yeah. 110%. I think we both come from homes where like mm -hmm. it didn't it didn't exist. Like healthy marriages did not exist. Wow. Yes. I feel like I'm, I'm at a point where I'm like, it's okay whatever route it goes to. And it took me a lot of like therapy and reading books to understand wow. that like this is another human being on his journey and his path. Yeah. And if it's meant to be, it will happen. Inshallah, whatever is meant for you is meant for you. I was watching Omar Suleiman and he was saying something like, okay, like no matter what you do, um, the person is a different person after marriage. So like you can spend as much time as you want getting wow. to know this person, but like the moment that you marry them, they're a different person. So Very you, true. No Very amount true. of time that you spend with this person will tell you who they are after marriage. So then I started to realize, okay, this is true. So you just have to kind of look at like the core values of that individual. Like how do they treat their family? Are they, are they honest? Do they lie about little things? Like, are they honest about, you know, their whereabouts? Are they honest about their friendships with people? Like, then I started looking at these kind of things. And then I started, I started thinking like, okay, if I have no control, right? You have to look at this. I, I have no control about who my partner is and like who they are. The only thing that I can control is myself and who I am. It's, so, it's one of the most important things that I've learned, but I consistently talk about is like, we have no control over anything except ourselves and the minute we tried is the minute we realize that the minute that we realize that only god has control over everything we will you'll feel lighter you'll let things go and then you'll start to look at things more black and white and not gray you know how many times people spend like years of their life trying to change somebody to, to get them to stop smoking, to yeah. get them to stop drinking, oh to my get them God. to whatever it is. And I'm like, yo, you don't understand. Like, he may not do this shit in front of you, but he's doing it damn well behind your back. Like, Absolutely. So Absolutely. just, like, learn to accept people for who they are, and, like, that's it. Yep. Get the clear answer. Ask the clear questions. I always say, like, when you're courting, when you're trying to figure out the person, ask yes or no questions. Yeah. Allow them to, to tell the, tell you about, tell them about themselves in a clear, concise way. And don't try to sugarcoat it. Don't try to make it into something it's not. Don't brush it off your shoulders. Keep it 100 with yourself. Be realistic about what this person is telling you who they are. I've actually been in, like, the wedding space for majority of my life so i used oh. to do bridal makeup oh wow right? so you can imagine i'm spending like a one weekend maybe three or four brides right so wow. i'm listening to their stories yeah. i'm listening to how they met their husband to be how they got proposed to and again like i heard it all like i heard that they dated for like you know eight nine years until they got engaged i heard that they dated for like a few months and they just knew when they got engaged and then i've also seen the same people who dated for a few months got divorced i've also seen the people who've got who uh were dating for nine years got divorced so like truly there is no formula of like time frame it's just a formula of what are you bringing to the relationship like yeah. i don't really think that like like, and I, I think that there's, like, a, um, a stigma around, like, long time before marriage or, like, a long engagement's not good. Yeah. And, like, and really, isn't that, isn't long just a definition that's different for everyone? Like, yeah, yeah. Long exactly. for me could be, like, all right, like, six years. But, like, to someone else that could be, like, oh, my God, you guys only knew each other for six years? That's crazy. And you guys yeah. spent forever together? Like, aren't you scared? Like... <laughs> Again, like, I think that's just different for everyone. Totally, so, totally. Yeah. Especially being in LA, it's like, girl, if you can make it four or five years, that's a long time. But then it's like, my parents, they've been together for 30 years. And I'm like, I, I've, I've changed every two and three years. I'm a different person. I have a different mentality. I've grown. I can't imagine 30 years. But I know that, like, exactly just like, you know, the brother said, like, you're going to change your person. Your personality will change when you get married. So ain't no point in trying to plan for that. Like do yeah. your best, but yeah. keep it moving. I guess, I guess it's just looking at the fundamentals, like your core values. And I think that's why like 
for me, like, I have, like, a certain thing that I do, right? Like, every Friday, I make sure I go to prayer. Like, maybe it's not something that's super religious, but it's the concept of bringing yeah. your entire family together to go. Yes. And it's, like, that one thing that you guys, like, look forward to. Yeah. So, like, that to me is, like, important in my life, right? Um, mm-hmm. The concept of, obviously, we want to make money and we live in America. Like, I get it. But then there's also this other concept of me that, like, I want to help as much as many people as possible while I'm here. Like, I don't yeah. believe in hoarding all your money and, like, holding on to it until you die. Oh, Maybe my God. Perfect. Absolutely. For more from this interview and other exclusive chill content, subscribe and follow Nick Guy and Chill everywhere now.